All right, guys, welcome to another installment of Johnny Does It All. Today, we're back in the kitchen and we're making a vegan warming spiced chili. Yeah, that's right, a vegan keto warming spiced chili. So specifically, I want to get into where I got this recipe and uh, I wanna show credit where credit is due, okay? This book was given to me by a friend by the name of Elle here in Atlanta who I've worked with uh, in the past. She recommended this book to me uh, by a friend that she has out in California, I believe Los Angeles. Sorry if I'm incorrect about that, but her friend Nicole wrote a book and it's called The Vegan Ketogenic Diet. And uh, I'm actually gonna leave a uh, link in the description below, an Amazon link. Uh, this book is available in hard copy. It's also available uh, in digital format online through Amazon, both. Both editions are available. This book is what got me started. Um, you know, when I started on my journey, uh, it was like, okay, what am I gonna be doing? I was already a vegetarian. I wasn't vegan. I was like, I can never do that. And uh, I was like, you know what? I need to try this keto thing, but I don't really eat meat. Is there a vegan keto diet? And sure enough, there was. And lo and behold, Nicole and her partner Whitney had written a book uh, called The Vegan Ketogenic Diet. So I take a look through this thing and I'm looking through all the different pages. And sure enough, every single thing in here looks delicious and it's stuff that I kind of already eat, right? So I'm like, let's give it a shot. And so here we are, we're back in the kitchen today and we're gonna be cooking the warming spice chili. I wanna bring you to the table right now and uh, go over all the ingredients for this. Remember guys, in just about three to four months, roughly around four months, I've lost about 60 pounds on the vegan ketogenic diet. So this, the proof is in the pudding. Um, I've definitely slimmed down um, and I just, I owe a lot, of, a, a lot of that to this vegan ketogenic diet. And again, I just wanted to give credit to uh, Nicole here, who's been really supportive as well. Uh, I've reached out to her and um, Nicole, thank you so much. You've, you've worked wonders for my life. And uh, anyways, guys, again, back in the kitchen, Johnny does it all. Let's head to our table and talk about some ingredients. All right, guys, here we are with the ingredients in front of us. Uh, I'm also holding the book in front of me to kind of guide me to uh, tell you, you know, what this original recipe called for quantity wise. Remember, we are doubling our recipe because I love to just, you know, do a lot of meal prep, stick our meal in the freezer, have a bunch of servings ready for me. When I come home from work, I can just grab one as I need it, pop it out, heat it up, and, and my dinner is ready to go. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me going throughout the week, just staying organized and uh, ready to go. So let's go over our ingredients real quick. I am going to discuss the original ingredient uh, quantity, but I'm gonna show you what I actually have here in front of me. The original recipe called for four tablespoons of cold pressed, uh, sorry, four tablespoons of cold pressed olive oil. We have here eight tablespoons. It called for one yellow chopped onion. I have two roughly chopped yellow onions here. Okay, let's talk about our seasonings. It called for four tablespoons of chili powder. We have eight here. It called for one teaspoon of ground cumin. I have two teaspoons here. The next thing it calls for is one uh, teaspoon of dried oregano. We have two full teaspoons here of dried oregano. It called for one teaspoon of ground allspice. We have two full teaspoons of ground allspice. It called for a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. We have one full teaspoon of ground cinnamon here. And it called for one teaspoon of ground coriander. We have two teaspoons of ground coriander. The next thing that it calls for is two times of sprig. I went out and got a package of thyme uh, sprigs. We're gonna have four sprigs in our mix. Pop that off to the side. Let's continue on. The recipe also called for black soybeans. One can of black soybeans rinsed and drained. We have here in front of us two cans of black soybeans rinsed and drained. Uh, in my local market, it is very, very tough to find black soybeans. I traveled far and beyond to try to find these and could not find them anywhere. Uh, you may have better luck online in your local area or maybe your grocery stores carry them or you know where to get them. It's very, very tough for me around here to find them. Uh, please feel free to let me know in the comments below if you're from the area and know where we can get these. Um, what I was actually able to do was go to a local farmer's market and find organic black soybeans in a package, dried and vacuum sealed. So I was able to actually portion these out as I pulled them out of the package. And it just really helps me a lot to do it that way as well. But either way, I'll leave a description in the, in the uh, I'll leave a link in the description below 
uh, to where you can find some black soybeans online if you are also having trouble. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about walnuts here. Uh, the recipe called for half a cup of walnuts. We have here one full cup of chopped walnuts. It called for a quarter cup of hemp seeds. We have a half a cup of hemp seeds here. Okay, it called for two cups of vegetable broth. This is four cups in this uh, container here in this box. It called for one eight ounce can of chunky stewed tomatoes. We have two cans here. Okay, it called for three tablespoons of tomato paste. We have six here. And then it also called for two cups of fresh kale. We have four cups of chopped fresh kale. Um, it also called for a half a cup of chopped scallions for garnish. We have roughly uh, one cup of chopped scallions for garnish. Um, this in the recipe calls to be used at the very, very end as a garnish. I actually like to toss it in as soon as I, you know, instead of adding it to my bowl directly, you know, as I eat this, I actually read the very end, as soon as I turn off the heat off the, the uh, stove top, I just pop it right in there, mix it around, and I actually just make it, you know, a part of the recipe. That's how I do it personally. It doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but that's how I like to do it. Also, Nicole writes here that you can use cayenne pepper to taste. It's optional. You don't have to use it. It's up to you on your personal preference. But either way, those are all the ingredients that we have here in front of us. And we're going to head over to the uh, stove and we're going to start cooking this up. All right, everyone. Here we are in front of our stove top. We're going to start adding ingredients to our pan, to our pot. Um, and we're going to get this thing going. I've mounted a GoPro uh, to the microwave facing down so you can kind of see what's being added to the pot to give you a first person perspective of what this thing is looking like. Let's now head over to that view. All right. First thing we're going to be doing is in our stock pot is we're going to be adding over medium heat the olive oil. So this is the, going to be the eight tablespoons of cold pressed olive oil being added to the pot. Make sure we get every little good drop in there. Okay, and what we can do now is add our onions. Okay, there's gonna be two full cups, or sorry, two full uh, onions, yellow onions, into the pan. Two yellow onions, roughly chopped. And what we could also do is add all of our seasonings, okay? And toss that right in. Bada bing, bada boom. And what we'll do is kind of just let that uh, heat up and uh, get going. Start letting these onions sweat a bit. And we'll mix all of our seasonings in with the onion and olive oil. And um, we'll come back to when this thing is uh, when this thing's a brewing. So hang on, hold tight. All right, folks, we've been uh, stirring this occasionally for five minutes. Uh, we've also added in our four sprigs of thyme. And I think we're ready to start adding some of our other ingredients into this mix. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our walnuts or sorry. our Yeah, we can add our walnuts too. Um, we're going to add in our two full cans of black soybeans right into the pot. Okay. And the other thing we're going to do is add our walnuts, like I said. Okay. This is our uh, one full cup of chopped walnuts into the pan. In. Okay. Hemp seeds. We're going to go for a half cup of hemp seeds now. That's in. And the next thing is going to be our vegetable broth and stewed tomatoes. So vegetable broth, we have four full cups of vegetable broth. This will, this will help us deglaze our pot as well. Keep that in mind. So if you're seeing anything stick to the bottom, don't worry about that. That's normal. I love that sound. So we're going to add in all four cups. Want to make sure you can see that barcode and everything. <laughs> so all four cups are going in. Okay. We can also um, add in our stewed tomatoes. So our two cans there. 
And uh, when, once we've added in these ingredient these ingredients into the pot, we can um, then start like kind of stirring this around and scraping the bottom and deglazing the pot. So let's do that now. Let's get right in there. Don't be afraid. Mix all of our ingredients around. Oh my God, that smells delicious. One thing I forgot to mention here was that I also added in our six tablespoons of tomato paste off camera. So when you added in your soybeans, walnuts, hemp seeds, vegetable broth, stewed tomatoes, you were also supposed to add in your six tablespoons or three tablespoons of tomato paste, depending on the quantity you are making. Looking good, looking good. So our very next step is to reduce the heat uh, to a low simmer for 45 minutes. And we're gonna allow the chili to thicken and uh, let all the flavors melt. So let's cover this up. We're gonna reduce our heat to low. Okay, and we're gonna let that sit for about 45 minutes. So let's come back uh, after 45 minutes. Okay, it's been 45 minutes. We're gonna take our cover out of our pot and we're gonna quickly stir this around, just make sure everything's melted together. I can assure you it is this house is smelling absolutely wonderful. So delicious. I mean, I could just smell the deliciousness spewing from this stock pot. What I'm also gonna do at this point is I'm gonna try to fish out these uh, sprigs of thyme, if I could find them. It's okay if they show up later. You can always uh, remove them later in the, in, the, uh, in the serving dish. But if you see them, go ahead and take them out. I might actually get lucky and find all four. And I did. So, there we go. That was easy. So, what we're going to do now is add in our uh, four cups of fresh kale. We're going to remove the heat as a factor. Completely turn that off. And start adding in this kale. At this point too, if you've chosen not to use the green onion uh, as a garnish, you can toss it in at the same time as the kale, and I'm going to do that. Um, with this removed from the heat, you're going to be stirring in this kale for four minutes. Let's go ahead and add our green onion in as well. And what I like to do is kind of just bat this down into the chili, get everything nice and coated. And once it's in there, I can then stir it. So I just kind of submerge the kale, the scallions, sorry, the green onion <laughs> um, in there. Okay, it's in. So now we can kind of give this a stir. And we're gonna stir this for four minutes. I'll let it sit in there for four minutes, occasionally stirring. And once you've gone ahead and done that, you can now take this done warming spiced chili and start to pour it into all of your containers for your meal prep. And you can also start, you know, adding it to the freezer so that you're ready to go and have all your meals prepped and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let's uh, move her over. To, let's move this all over to the table and give it a taste test. All right, guys, here we go. Vegan, keto, warming, spiced chili. That's right. Chili that's vegan keto. What more could you ask for? Uh, I've been making this recipe you know, for quite some time now. And uh, I just have to say, you know, thank you again. I owe a debt of gratitude to Nicole and her book, The Vegan Ketogenic Diet. It's recipes like this that, you know, made this diet easy, achievable, and you guys can do it too. Um, I have my containers here that are ready to be popped in the freezer so I can have my meal prep uh, done and ready to go. I can just grab them out of the freezer as I need them, heat them up whenever I'm ready to eat my dinner. Speaking of dinner, it's dinner time. Let's try enjoying this. Let's give it a taste test to make it official. <laughs> Not to talk with my mouth full, but 
I have to. It's like every time I make this, it just gets better and better. And every time it's always like a unique experience. And the flavors are just exploding in my mouth. Wow. Guys, absolutely fantastic. Wonderful. Um, remember, I lost 60 pounds in four months doing the vegan ketogenic diet. And, uh, you know, it's recipes like this that made it possible. I just got back uh, from the store a few days ago. I went to go buy a new pair of jeans because none of my jeans were fitting me anymore. My clothes are all huge. I don't know if, you know, this is just ridiculously huge on me. Um, and I left the store the other day almost practically in tears. I, I swear I was almost in tears in the fitting room. You know, I walked into that fitting room wearing a size 38 waist and I walked out wearing a size 32. I haven't been in a size 32 since junior high, you know. So it's uh, it's been a crazy journey. It's been an emotional one. And, uh, you know, part of me making these videos is always to help you guys too. You know, any of my knowledge that I have or any experiences that I've learned from other people, um, or any wisdom I've learned from other people I want to share with you guys here on this channel. So you know we don't just do cooking, we do you know, car repair, we do gardening, we do camping, survival, um, a little bit of everything. So electronic repair, right? But um, make sure you guys subscribe to all of our Facebook, you know, Instagram, Twitter, social media accounts. Uh, here on YouTube, Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, make sure that it's set to all so that anytime we make a video or we go live, you know about it. And uh, guys, you know, I hope that this meal does as good for you as it has it done as it's done for me. Uh, a meal like this has really kept me going throughout this whole entire journey. Uh, I know this video is a little bit long, but I really wanted to share my experience. I didn't want to cut this video down because I wanted this to be live and I want it to be real. So I know I rant on sometimes, sometimes I make them short, sometimes I make them long, but this one, it just needed to be the length that it was because I just needed you guys to see my reactions when I'm doing this and I need you guys to hear my testimony of what happened in my life and you know what's really keeping me going. So again, in the description below, um, you'll see affiliate links for Nicole's book, uh, The Vegan Ketogenic Diet, and I may also leave some other affiliate links in there as well if you guys check out. Uh, remember, when you click on these links, it does not cost you anything extra, and a small commission does go to me. It helps us keep going with this channel to keep providing you content. Um, that's all I got for today, guys. I'm going to go ahead and enjoy the rest of my dinner. It is dinner time, and uh, God bless, guys. God bless you, and thank you for watching. See you soon.